Before I start talking about COVID-19, I'm giving you a little bit of an introduction of what Marmicor is all about and uh, why we're looking to human milk for new answers. So I start with this sentence here to introduce you to the topic, and it says that the death of 823,000 children and 20,000 mothers each year could be averted through universal breastfeeding. And that comes along with an economic savings of about $300 billion every year. This is from the uh, Lancet Breastfeeding Series 2016, and it really opened many questions. Um, what is in human milk that makes it so powerful and can we potentially exploit that and harness that power of human milk to develop new treatments and therapeutics? So just to give you one example here, uh, human milk is saving lives. Every single day, we are still losing about 2,200 children under the age of five to diarrheal disease every single day. On the other hand, we know that children who are breastfed have substantially lower risks to suffer and die from infectious diseases, including diarrhea, but also infectious uh, respiratory diseases. So what is in human milk that makes it so powerful? And it's not just the immediate benefit for the breastfed child at that very moment of breastfeeding, there's really benefits for life. We know that infants that are breastfed have a lower risk for overweight um, and obesity later on in life. There's a lower risk for diabetes as well. And we know that children that are breastfed uh, have a higher IQ and higher earning potential even after correcting for other socioeconomic uh, factors. So again, what is in human milk that makes it so powerful to have these long-lasting effects? And it's not just good for the breastfed infant, it's also good for the breastfeeding mother. We see that women who breastfeed have a lower risk for diabetes, uh, have a lower risk for cardiovascular disease, and are also at lower risk to develop breast cancer and ovarian cancer. And the question remains, what is in human milk that makes it so powerful to save lives? And really, there's opportunities for people of all ages. If we look at the current health statistics, we lose about 18 million people every year to cardiovascular disease. So that's your heart attack and stroke. Uh, 1.3 million people suffer from rheumatoid arthritis in the US alone. And I mentioned already the infants that we lose to diarrheal disease. Uh, it's predicted that we lose about 10 million people to infectious superbugs by the year 2050. One in five children develop obesity. 422 million people suffer from diabetes. About 3 million people in the US alone have inflammatory bowel disease. And one in eight women will develop breast cancer. So we really have a world in crisis even before this pandemic um, uh, was striking. So what do we do? We need answers. We need to find solution for all these health problems. And if we need answers, we often go to the chemical labs, develop new drugs, develop vaccines, develop all kinds of remedies. And uh, that's really the traditional way of uh, finding answers to some of these diseases. Well, most of these drugs, though, come with many, many side effects. These are mostly compounds the hum uh, human body is not exposed to and uh, triggers uh, adverse effects uh, accordingly. So what have we been looking to the right answers in all the wrong places? What if we look to human milk for new answers instead and go the non-traditional way that UCSD is really paving? This is all in the space of prevention, diagnostic, and treatment. Um, so we're really working in the space of what's called DOHAT, Developmental Origins of Health and Disease, meaning that what happens in the very early phases during pregnancy and lactation, breastfeeding, determines your uh, trajectories later on in life and really all the way over to improving longevity. While we are in the School of Medicine, this is not just a medical issue. This is a public health issue, really a global public health issue. And not only this, there is certain other facets in this kind of research uh, that really hit some of the key points. So for example, this is a question of gender equity. Women are often left alone with this breastfeeding issue, right? Breastfeeding, that's a women's issue. It's not, it's a society issue. If we don't protect, promote, and support women to breastfeed, society will suffer from this greatly. This is also a uh, racial equity issue. 
we see that many of the diseases that I mentioned before, minorities are more affected. Obesity comes to mind as a great example, but also uh, minority women are less likely to breastfeed. So you get a double hit here and we need to address these uh, inequities as well. And last but not least, comes a little bit as a surprise maybe, but this is also a question of environment and climate change. Imagine the footprint, the carbon footprint that is uh, associated with not breastfeeding, with producing infant formula and supplying that to about half the population, about 50% of the population of the infant population is currently not breastfed. This is what Mommy Core is all about. It's not just a health issue, it's really a society issue. Why do we study human milk now in this pandemic uh, coronavirus crisis? So there's multiple different questions to this. First of all, we need to make sure that if we have a mom that is infected with this virus, that the virus is not present in human milk and is then transferred to the infant and infects the infant. So uh, the question is, can a baby get infected through breastfeeding? And if that's the case, then we need to know that and we need to guide and support parents and healthcare providers accordingly. On the other hand, is it possible that there is components in human milk that can stop the virus? So for example, we know there's antibodies in human milk. When mom gets exposed, she develops antibodies. And this is not just the case for coronavirus. This is the case for many other diseases. So she develops antibodies. Those antibodies are handed over to the child through breast milk, and then the child is protected. So is that the case in coronavirus? There's also other components in human milk that are independent of whether the mom was exposed before or not. One example is oligosaccharides that my lab is working on that specifically block certain pathogens, whether it's bacteria or viruses, and that's why we can use those um, as uh, antimicrobial um, entities. And there's antimicrobial peptides and many other things. So again, we need to know all these different things to guide and support parents and healthcare providers to make uh, the right decisions. But most importantly, can we take that knowledge, can we extract antibodies, can we extract and synthesize oligosaccharides, for example, or peptides to make available as a new treatment option against this coronavirus? So what we really want to do is to stop the pandemic by developing new antivirals to prevent or treat COVID-19. What would success look like in this space? Well, first of all, we want to have parents that are confident to breastfeed. So we need to have accurate information, not only developed, but also communicated to the public. We need to make sure that healthcare providers make recommendations that are based on evidence and science and not just based out of fear. So that is very key. We need data and the data needs to drive recommendations. And last but not least, we want to have novel and safe antivirals to prevent and treat COVID-19 and, and really contribute to the arsenal of potential weapons that we can use against this new virus. And it's very important that this is not just crisis management. We need to make sure that not only if another virus hits, but when the next virus hits, that we are ready. Okay, what does this all take? Well, it takes expertise and we, none of us really has all the expertise to answer all these questions, right? So we need to work together. We need to work as a team, multidisciplinary team across uh, silos and across boundaries here. And uh, in this case, we're working very closely with our San Diego Center for AIDS Research and also working with colleagues at UCLA. Um, we have what we call Mommy's Milk here at UCSD, a biorepository where women send milk samples through and then we can analyze those. Very important um, to do that as well. And of course, it takes resources. Uh, it, it takes emergency resources. We are very fortunate to have a partner in Switzerland, uh, the Family Loss and Rosenquist Foundation, who originally donated uh, over $10 million to start Mommy Core. Uh, that was about three years ago. And now uh, they literally made emergency funding available for coronavirus research overnight. We called them up at night and we said, you know, we really need to do this research. The next morning we had an email in the inbox saying, yep, here is uh, the first $100,000 uh, to get you started. And we also received a, a very generous personal donation out of the community um, that, uh, that also goes into this kind of research. And we're very thankful for, for those uh, private philanthropists as well. All right, so back to where we started. 
uh, life and death in parallel to the COVID-19 and uh, pandemic, all these issues, they're not going away. They're happening in parallel. We're losing people left and right to all these different diseases. People are suffering. And uh, this is our common goal for Mamico is to take a non-traditional approach to take a look at human milk to find new answers for all these different diseases, but really uh, make this milk moonshot not about health only. This is really a society issue. And uh, where could we do this better than uh, at UC San Diego, where we do non-traditional things and where we work together, uh, we don't have silos and we break down barriers and, and come together and tackle these huge questions together. Thank you.